What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. As you guys remember, I posted a subscriber Q&A video on Sunday of this week, and I received a great question that I thought would make a very good video just by itself. Joshua373 asked, I'm completely new to graded figures. I've been watching your videos for several weeks and have learned a lot. Well, first, Joshua, thank you for watching, and uh, I appreciate the support. When I look at loose graded figures on eBay that are graded, I find myself being able to afford most figures in a 70 to 75 grade. As a beginner collector, is it worth my money to purchase figures at that grade, or should I just focus on buying loose figures in nice condition and sending them off to be graded? When I first read Joshua's question, I thought it was a pretty straightforward one. But the more I started thinking about it, there's a lot of factors that go into how I answer it including your budget, how patient you are to not only find the item that you're looking to grade, but also how patient you are with the turnaround times with the grading companies. How rare is the item? All of these things can factor into it, as well as how experienced you are in identifying a loose graded figure or an ungraded mint on card figure and what kind of grade it's gonna get. So let's take a closer look at all of these factors. Before we start even talking about graded versus ungraded action figures, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, what's my budget? Do you find yourself eating rice cakes all the time? Or maybe you're that struggling country music singer that's made the crossover into pop music and making bank. Well, whether you're going through some lean times and eating rice cakes, or if you have a lot of money to play with, there are several key points that I wanna get across. Number one, set a budget and try not to go over that. I know that in the past I've gone over my budget on certain items or during a certain time frame, and I've always been stressed about it. So try to stay within a certain budget, and if you spend it all, that's cool, just be patient. Once you get some more play money, then you can always buy more. Two, stay on target. When you're just starting out on graded and ungraded items that you're going to send away, stay with a very small focus group to start out. Don't do what I did and start buying stuff here and there, vintage, vintage collection, bootlegs, variants, overstock. There are so many different options out there for Star Wars collecting, and it's important to not get overwhelmed. Three, don't overpay. I'll get into that in a little bit more detail, but it's important to know the prices. And then finally, there are, will always be more. There will always be others. There were millions and millions of these licensed Star Wars figures made over the years. And you can always find another one unless it's a super rare variant, which we'll talk about later on. But just be patient. And if you happen to miss one, or if you feel like the price is too high, let it go. So getting a handle on prices is probably the most important thing to understand and how that fits in with your budget. I tell anyone, that starts collecting graded Star Wars figures, don't count on making a million dollars on them. While a lot of collectors do view these items as investments, I always tell people, pretend that they're gonna be worthless at the end of the day. Take a look at the types of items that you're looking to collect, and then look at prices. Look at eBay sales prices, the actual sold listings, not the for sale listings. And also there's useful apps like Star Wars Tracker, I included a couple of screenshots from the Star Wars Tracker app. The Star Wars Tracker app is available for pretty much any mobile device, and I believe also for the desktop. It does cost money, but don't let that deter you. Spending a little bit of money up front to help you learn Star Wars prices can save you a lot of money in the long run. As you can see, you can track prices for pretty much any character, any variant, graded versus ungraded, and the last six months sales. It's very helpful for learning what the high and low prices are as well as averages. Here are a couple of more screenshots from the Star Wars Tracker app. As you can see, it gives you really, really detailed information all the way from the high prices all the way to the lows. So that way you can get a better idea of what the price of each figure can be. These are just examples with the Luke Skywalker farm boy as well as a man of man, but in general, it's, it's great for 
getting a general feel of what the price is of what you're looking for with slight highs and slight lows depending on condition. That way, you can stay within budget and not overpay. Oh, and while we're on the subject of prices, eBay should be your last resort, your very last. There are so many better sources for finding both graded and ungraded figures than eBay. Here are just a few examples of some of the Facebook groups that I'm a member of. Echo Base Vintage Trading USA, Echo Base Vintage Variants, those are great for finding rare variants, both graded and ungraded. Deal or No Deal is another group that I've talked about in past videos. And I see lots of awesome items, both graded and ungraded, prototypes, proof cards, you name it. I've seen it in, in Deal or No Deal. It's one of the best groups out there, and it's really blown up. And of course, if you want stuff that's already graded, there's a number of different groups out there on Facebook that sell nothing but graded items from AFA, UKG, or CAS. So take some time, join a bunch of groups, meet a lot of cool folks, and see who has deals and who doesn't who overprices stuff, who likes to make fair trades and fair sales. And you can find deals on here that are so much better than eBay and are a great starting point for beginning your collection. So check out some of the groups on Facebook, the ones I've mentioned, or others that you can find on your own. There are literally dozens of awesome groups on Facebook and the prices are way less, usually, than eBay. Save some money and learn the groups, learn who, who sells a lot, and who has good deals. Some people overprice stuff, some people don't. But if you're patient, take some time and you'll find some great deals. I know I have. Another important factor to consider is your patience level. How patient are you to submit an item and then wait for the grading companies to finish up with it? The turnaround times can vary depending on what you're getting graded. The wait time for submissions at Collector Archive Services varies depending on the item. A loose graded standard licensed Star Wars figure usually takes about two months and about the same for a mint on card. But custom items like my gigantic first shot prototype Ackley Arena Battle Beast that you see here, man is he ugly. That one can take six months or more. So it just depends on the item. And it depends on how customized the case is going to be when you're dealing with collector archive services. Meanwhile, over at Action Figure Authority, they are really backed up right now. They have completely closed their economy scale, which is their cheapest and longest turnaround time. So you're going to have to pay quite a bit more in order to get AFA to grade your items right now. So given the turnaround times at the grading companies, it can often feel like a really, really long time and this cuts both ways you have to be patient for items that are very difficult to find and here are two examples of where patience paid off for a number of years i wanted an overstock non-sonic welded unpainted c-3po made in mexico and i could just never locate one well lo and behold my buddy ryan listed one for sale in one of the facebook groups and i went ahead and pulled the trigger and then Due to insomnia one night, I was up late and I found a pretty rare bootleg that I had been kind of searching for off and on for a number of months. And lo and behold, it got listed for about 200 bucks, and I didn't wait around and I bought it. This is actually one of only three examples known to exist with this rare color combination. This is a Russian 1990s bootleg Bosque with a very rare metallic green flight suit. One very important factor to consider is what your attention to detail is. When I first started buying figures to get graded, the scores sometimes weren't that good. And it was because I didn't look close enough before I bought the figure. And as I became more experienced with buying figures that are loose and looking for flaws and asking a lot of questions, the grades went up. This Darth Vader is a fairly obvious example of a figure with major defects, but sometimes it's not quite so obvious. Zoom in on all the photos to make sure that it meets your needs. If you have any doubts, ask the seller for some more photos. If they don't provide them, then chances are they're trying to hide something. I usually save trusted sellers in my eBay profile 
so I know that the seller is providing good quality figures if I bought from them in the past. Also, verify that the accessories are correct on the Imperial Gunnery or on Variant Villain on Facebook. Here are two other items that I purchased ungraded. I think both on eBay. And these are good examples of figures that you can probably find pretty easily ungraded and then grade yourself to save some money. Already graded, these items can go for $150 or more if they're high enough grade. One of these I purchased for about $25. I believe it was this IG-88 that I think is a, it's a Hong Kong with hollow eyes. If you're going to buy this already graded on eBay, it's going to be substantially more, even factoring in the grading costs and the cost of shipping to and from the grading company. So I think with less rare figures, it's better, you're better off just buying the figures ungraded, but make sure you ask a lot of questions. I asked a ton of questions on both of these figures, how tight the joints were. I asked for close-ups of the figures to check out paint rubs and things like that. And I also needed to verify that the accessories were correct for this figure. This Spanish-made forelom with the red armor is another item that's pretty rare. And I passed on a number of different examples that had either had tears in the cape, stains on the cape, a lot of wear around the eyes. Until finally I found one in Spain on a random website that was not eBay and not on Facebook. I had to use Google Translate to understand the seller who could only speak Spanish. I asked a lot of questions. I asked about the tightness of the limbs. I confirmed that all of the accessories and the interior of the cape were the actual correct Spanish accessories. And then I finally pulled the trigger after doing some research and getting a better idea of prices. Yet another item to think about is how rare is the item that I'm looking for to get graded? Sometimes you don't have a choice. If it's an item that's already been graded and it only comes up once or twice a year, you better grab it. As an example, this is my Spanish Puck, early Spanish figure of a Jawa with the dark brown bandoliers. I've only seen maybe one or two of these come up for sale this year and they've either been ungraded in really rough shape or They've already been graded, but extremely expensive. Anyway, this one came up already graded, and it was an amazing condition. It's a UKG 85, and the price was very fair, about the same price of what these can go for ungraded. So beggars can't be choosers. I went ahead and pulled the trigger to lock it in. These are two more examples where it's really important to not only trust the seller, but do the research and make sure that the information is correct. These are Spanish Puck, Han Solo, and Luke X-Wing figures, and these were ungraded when I bought them. To me, it almost didn't matter what the grade was going to be, as long as they had the correct accessories and they were the actual correct Spanish Puck figures. It was a trusted seller that I've dealt with in the past who lives in Spain and regularly sells beautiful Spanish figures. When he sold these to me, I knew they were legit, but I needed to make sure that the information was correct and I had lots of backup documentation for collector archive services to make sure that the labels were correct. Sometimes you just gotta take a risk and hope that the grade comes back somewhat decent. These both graded around 70, and like I said, I didn't really care because they're such rare figures. And for you mint on card collectors, if you're looking for a specific card back of a specific character, sometimes that might only pop up a few times a year. So for example, I wanted to go on a mini 48C Revenge of the Jedi sticker run earlier this year, and I couldn't be too choosy because these don't come up all that often, at least the ones within my budget. I, I did find two that were ungraded that I did have graded later on by Collector Archive Services, but the ATAT -AT driver, for example, was already graded. The price was right, the condition was right, so I went ahead and got it, even though it was already graded. So after looking at all of those different factors, to answer Joshua's question directly, it all depends. It all depends on those factors and I'm sure a number of others that I'm forgetting. But I think this is a good starting point for those who are considering buying items to grade versus items that are already graded and all of the different factors that can affect your answer to that question. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe for future content and you never know when I might answer one of your questions. Thanks for watching.